What is up guys, Sophia here back with another video. If you are new here, then don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can stay updated on all of my videos. And also don't forget to check the description box because I always put a lot of stuff in there, specifically my book for single women. So what we're gonna be talking about today is Derek Jackson. Y'all know I had to hit on it. If you guys don't know, I am a national certified counselor. I have a PhD in human behavior. I have a master's in counseling. Why am I telling you that? Because I'm about to break the situation down on the red flags that you as a female should look for that these females, his wife and the women that he messed with, because I don't feel like it was any of the women's fault because, you know, they was lied to. But you could see some of the red flags that evidently they missed that you don't want to miss when dealing with some of these men. And also, you know, as a disclaimer, obviously I'm a mental health professional. I have not seen these people clinically, so I can't say if I'm 100% right, but I'm definitely going to give you my take on the situation. So let's go ahead and get right on into it. So first, I want to get into the mentality of Derek Jackson and why he cheated. Um, Derek Jackson, I'm going to show a before and after picture here. If you can see that he obviously went through a glow up. And I'm actually going to show a snippet from my video on why men cheat that I feel describes Derek perfectly. To have anything usually to offer women, but when he gets out of college, gets a real career going, he is usually in his mid to late 20s. And at this point, he can get a nicer car, nicer clothes, nicer crib. Now that he has some bargaining chips, he now has um, options for getting different types of females. It says now that he has become a professional brother, he is starting to get play from women who didn't even give him play before. So he decides that he is going to stay married, but live a double life and has have his fun with other women on the side. And see so as you can see, his mentality, I believe, is because he got with his um, wife when they were in college and he did a level up that he believed that he can pull better women now and now he feels that he was going to do that and so basically that's what he did and that's why he cheats but also as I said in that video is that a man is never going to leave his wife in that situation and the reason being is because they have a lot of history let's be real there is no doubt in my mind that he does love his wife but I also believe that there is an element of toxicity mixed into it when it comes to him and also when it comes to her because at the end of the day you know for me and y'all you guys know that I have been celibate for six years how would it look if I'm up here celibate and I'm up here preaching the bible to y'all or I'm not celibate like if I'm sitting up here telling you oh don't fornicate don't do this and I'm sitting up here doing it myself so I genuinely believe because Derek Jackson if you guys don't know he has now brought God into this and all this other type of stuff what what I'm going to say about that is that for anybody is that whenever you want to be in a position where you are teaching people something, your actions need to match up with your word or God is going to take issue with you. The Bible specifically says that what you do in the dark will come into light and you will reap what you sow. Never take that lightly, especially if you are out here profiting off of lies. And then if you give your life to Christ, as he said in his video. First and foremost, I'm accountable to God. Then I have to be accountable to my wife in which we've already had this conversation then you have to understand that God's going to be like, okay, I call your bluff. How much you going to bend on this to see what type of man you really are? So I believe this is exactly why God blew this whole thing off the top. So for him to throw God in this, yeah, God is in it, but probably not in the way that he think because ultimately people do need to be the people that they portray. Now let's go ahead and get into the side chicks or the people that he was messing with, which like I said, I personally don't blame them. And if you guys don't know, one of the top blogs on my website is can a married man love his mistress? And also on my YouTube channel, I have done a few videos about people cheating with married men. And for whatever reason, women, y'all cannot seem to get this through your thick I love you, right? But you can't get this through your thick brain because people will challenge me on this all the time. And this is why I need you to see exactly what I'm talking about. Because at the end of the day, as I said in one of my videos, you're not messing with a man when he's separated. The only time you are messing with a man is when he gets a divorce, okay? I don't wanna hear he don't sleep with his wife. I don't wanna hear that he don't that he don't love her. I don't wanna hear that they're in a separation. I don't wanna hear whatever excuse that he gave to you because guess what? Derek Jackson gave the same excuse to all of these women. If you see, and these were, and these are two women that came out. 
So he told these women, oh, I am separated from my wife. My wife does not live with me. In one case, he said his wife's sex was bad and to one woman. And, um, and I mean, just all of these things, right? But see, here's where the women messed up because all of these women came over to his house, right? And all of these women obviously saw that his wife's stuff was there. So therefore, you don't need to believe his lies. And I can actually relate to a personal situation with this that one time way back when, way, way, way back when I met this guy and I went over his house once and I could automatically tell he was married, automatically. The entire house looked like a woman decorated it. So if you want to sit up there and be in this woman's bed and listen to the lies that he's telling you, despite this making absolute no sense, then you can go ahead and do that. But women, sometimes we have to be smarter and we cannot be complacent in the lies that men tell us when really it just takes a little bit of us doing the right thing that it takes a little bit of us doing the right thing in order not to find ourselves in this position for example once they said that he was separated they should have been like all right well call me when you divorce from your wife see how that works see all of this could have been avoidable for them all of this could have been avoidable and see this is what um I want you ladies to realize because at the end of the day, no matter how much money, because, you know, if we go on the comments of some of my blog with mistresses who married, mess with married men, they're going to say this. Oh, well, we have fun and y'all just mad that we but you're not because guess what? At the end of the day, this man went back to his wife, as you can see, his wife is sitting up in a big old house, as you can see. And she is getting all the benefits of being his wife, as you can see, as toxic and as messed up and as jacked as it all is. The fact of the matter is that he went right back to her. She is sitting up there right back with him and she and they and she is benefiting monetarily and everything else from his success, not the side chicks. So y'all can sit up here and continue on to glorify this if you want to be a side chick to a married man, a man is separated and therefore there's something special and all this balarkey, I made that word up, balarkey that you guys like to tell me as to why I'm telling you that you don't need to mess with a married man and at the end of the day, you're gonna be sitting here up there looking real crazy, watching the video on YouTube, this man with his wife trying to apologize to the world and act like you don't mean anything to him. Even though some of these women were, were doing this for years at a time right so the last and most or the second to the last and most important element that I want to get into is his wife and first of all I want to say this as a faith-based person who teaches directly from the Bible you guys know that one of the one of the conditions in which God does allow us to get a divorce is if a man cheats on us I want to say that because I'm a huge advocate for marriage I got my master's in marriage and family therapy I would not have gone through all of this work if I was not a proponent for relationships I'm a proponent for healthy relationships I'm not a proponent for this honestly and I'm going to tell you why so the first thing is that what she needs to realize is because I think his wife is beautiful. I'm not going to like come against her appearance or anything like that. I think that she's beautiful, but I am also going to talk about that within the context of the situation. However, I think that she's not looking at the situation realistically because, you know, realistically she's saying, oh, well, I found out he cheated and I left and then I was sleeping on a couch or something. And then, you know, she kept saying that in their video, right? But the fact of the matter is, is that she came back. And as I said in my last video that I'm actually gonna post down in the description box is that you should walk, like your, your response should be you walking away and that's that. And also I think in her particular situation that because, because mind you, I knew that he was married. And this is actually why I stopped listening to Derek Jackson way kind of back when I might've caught a few videos because my friend turned me on to him and I found out that he had a long-term girlfriend that he was not married to. And he was speaking all of this stuff about marriage and this, that, and the third. And it kind of rubbed me the wrong way because I feel like your actions are not matching up with your words. And that's the type of person that I am. I always say, if your actions don't match up with your words, it's weird. If you call Sophia out on any given day, you're going to say her ashes match up with her words. You, I'm a right you can take that word that I just said to the bank and you can cash it because that's the type of person that I am you already know I'm a straight shooter I don't portray myself to be perfect I practice what I preach and I believe that this is why because like I said when you don't then you put yourself in a position to get your feelings hurt and this is kind of how I feel with the situation with him and his wife because she is a Christian I had to get 
with God and be honest and say, Lord, I don't deserve this. I've dealt with it for too many years and the repetitiveness of it, the things that I've seen, guys, you, you don't understand the things that I've seen, the images that I've seen, the videos that I've seen did a number on me. There was a time where I was broken and I was damaged. And my whole thing is that, you know, we cannot glorify this. That's basically what I'm saying. God says that you can get a divorce in the case of an adultery. She does not want to do that, which is completely up to her. But what I don't want to see Christian women do is feel like because I am married, that I must take this situation of whatever and back the Bible and throw the Bible and talk about my toxic covenant, because that's what this is, and try to say that God is in this. Because God is not in this. And here's how we know the extensive lengths that he went through to cheat on his wife. And wives, if you are married, if you are in a relationship, these are some of the red flags that you need to look out for. He hid you. Just like I said, there was a controversy way back when that Derek Jackson was not claiming the woman that he was with. And I found that to be odd. As a woman, if you are with a man and a man is talking about relationships and he is not wearing his um, his wedding ring, which that's problematic. And that should be a red flag for you. If he does not claim you on social media, granted, you don't have to be in every single picture, but that's a problem. These are little things that was happening. And then also when it came to that car situation, it also caught me off. It, it, it caught me as strange. The reason why is because I'm like, okay, if you married and you have a whole family, why are you always in your car and you never recording your videos in your house with your wife and your family? You don't have to show her anything, but probably because a lot of stuff you speak in is a bunch of bull. I'm just saying. And you don't even want her to be complacent in the bull by hearing it. That's why you in your car, because you can't even be in your house around your wife talking that foolishness because she gonna be giving you the side eye like, fool, this ain't the man that, I, that you talking about. Who are you talking? You telling these women what type of man you telling them to stay away from you basically so I feel like all of this and it doesn't even have to be the car but when you kind of look at his life it was there his family and his wife was quite hidden and this does not mean that you have to share everything about yourself but I think we all know what I mean by hidden and that was a red flag it should have been a red flag for her because your husband should claim you as also I want to bring out the fact when a man uses your faith against you understand this ladies and me and God, we some close people. And I remember I was watching this and I was like, Lord, fix it, Jesus, right? Because at the end of the day, I don't ever want any of my Christian women to um, think that being a Christian means that you have to step into foolishness time and time again and plead the blood of Jesus in order to fix somebody who may or may not want to be fixed. One thing I do agree with her is, yeah, God fixes people. Leave it up to God to fix your man. But ultimately, sometimes your man don't want to be fixed and you cannot use your faith because I think a lot of men do this, especially with Christian women. And I said this in my video when it's when I was talking about um, using men who are wolves in sheep's clothing and they kind of and they find out you, that you're a Christian and they kind of use your faith against you and become all godly and all this stuff. And they turn into this godly man overnight as a person who is a creature, who is a Christian and also a teacher of the word. I'm going to tell you this, what God told me, you know, when it came to my faith, God, I was kind of like her in the sense that I felt like I had to be this ride or die chick and stay in toxic and stupid stuff regardless. God was like, no, boo-boo, if I am your father and you read in Ephesians 5, 25, I'm going to put the exact Bible verse up and you actually read how a man is supposed to love you. Your husband is supposed to love you. Nowhere does it say this. Matter of fact, the Bible specifically says, do not leave the wife of your youth. So my whole thing is don't sit up here. And I know that this is very natural for Christians to do that when your husband has made a decision to go cheat on you and adulterer and all this stuff that you claim in to my, Oh, the devil is at work. Yeah. The devil is at work in, in the midst of your damn husband. Excuse my language. The devil is at work in your husband. That's where it's working at. Don't, don't say the devil is at work through these women. Cause they did not know. Don't say that the devil is at work. through the, the only place that the devil is hiding is in the lust in the middle of your husband. That's where he's at work. Don't try to put it on anybody else or anything else but him, okay? And see, he knows that she is such a God-fearing woman that he is now going to mistake her kindness for weakness and have her throwing up her cape and her S on her chest to cape for him to save his business. And now all of us are looking at her side-eyed because this makes no sense for us. 
when it when it came down to me going through my spiritual transformation, and I'm not saying Derek Jackson is not going down through his spiritual transformation, but trust and believe that when you put God in your ministry or on your platform, God is going to deal very harshly with you. If you're not doing, or you not, if you are on a level where you are trying to use his name for clout, God going to be like, are you serious or are you not serious? Because we're going to test this in a minute. And the reason why I'm getting so passionate about this is because, you know, me and God, we like white on rice, man. That That's my ace. And so don't be throwing God in this and don't throw God into your ministry if you're not prepared. And if you're not going to model the behavior that you're going to show other Christians, because at the end of the day, you're going to turn other people away from God because of your foolishness. And that I do not like. I'm sorry. So do not let men use your faith against you to, t- to guide all this blah, 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 blah. It, because as a real man, what he should have did is I'm going to bow out my platform momentarily and get myself together and then I'm going to come back. Because evidently, how much is God up in you in the day before, if you guys remember, and I'm going to post the video in here. That- That's, I gave my life to Christ in February on February 4th, 2020. Matter of fact, some of y'all that follow my Twitter may have, may have seen me a couple of weeks ago talking about how I just hit my one. I got money. I got this, that, and the other. And I really honestly just went to a place of, of effort. Just screw it. I don't care no more. I don't. I hit Candace up. I'm going to come down to Miami. We're going to kick it. I'm going to get a yacht, blah, blah, blah. Now, here's the thing. And we're going to do a Q&A right after this. Here's the thing. So me and Candace have had a sexual relationship without actually having sex. And he sat up there and lied to all of us. This is after he so-called found God. You lied to all of us talking about, I ain't, I ain't sleep with this woman. Knowing daggone well you did. That don't sound like a man of God to me because thou shalt not lie. And just like I said in my video, when I talked about be on your grown woman status, what did I say? If you- and it says, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child and I reasoned like a child. And when I became a man or in this case, a woman or an adult or whoever the case, <laughs> I did away with childish things. Child, what do children do? Children will often lie. And children will often throw temper tantrums and children will often be argumentative. If y'all watch my channel, then you should already know I'm a big advocate of not lying, training yourself not to lie. It gets under my skin when I see adult people who just lie. It's like if you are an adult, you should not be lying. And how that transforms in your regular behavior is that you learn to do things when you are an adult that you don't have to lie about. If you are doing something that you feel like you have to lie about later on, then don't do it because that's- You grown, then you should learn how to tell the truth and you don't lie, period, because that's what grown people do. I say it for women and now I'm saying it for him. That's not godly. You got some work to go if you can't even stand in front of your audience and tell the truth and you go sit up there and lie in your video and then you're going to take it down and then you're going to appear the next day with your wife. Get, get out of here, man. Miss me with that. How about those apples? Okay. So now we're going to go into her appearance because that is something that I've noticed that people have been going out on. First of all, I want to say that she's a beautiful, naturally beautiful girl. I genuinely do believe that. But I also believe that in a situation, you guys all already know that I have said that your body is your temple. God specifically tells us to be a living sacrifice. Back in the day, when we talk about the Old Testament, the only thing that could be offered as a living sacrifice was the most perfect animal that had no blemish and that was without wrinkle. Does that say we have to be perfect? No, but what does that say about you if you're offering yourself up as a living sacrifice on how you should upkeep about your appearance? I have several videos on this, guys. So I want to pre-reference that so y'all don't feel like I'm going in on her looks because I'm not. I don't feel like people have to wear makeup. I don't feel like people have to do anything. I do feel like you should put your best foot forward, but I'm not gonna blame her on this. And the reason why is because first of all, I think that it's a very stressful thing to have to deal with this situation and it's very difficult to give a care right when you're going through this situation and that's directly what I could kind of see like she's just like whatever I don't care because I feel like it is very natural that you if you are happy if you are positive if you are in a good space if your man is treating you well and I also believe Derek Jackson said this in one of his videos if your man is treating you well then you should be a reflection of that how is he appearing on camera all dressed up looking all nice and you got your 
your woman out here not looking nice. Say what you want to say, but that's just like me as a single mom. And I talk about single mom issues. Me appearing on camera with my son looking all fly and he looking all busted with holes in his clothes and looking all dirty, looking like he ain't had no food. And you and you looking at me like, Sophia, how you going to be talking about single mom issues and you got your, and you got your son out here looking crazy? Derek, how you going to be talking about relationships, lip ship issues? And your wife looks like she does, 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 doesn't care. And like I said, this is not about her appearance. I don't know if I'm like making sense. I feel like this is an overall essence. Y'all know how it is when, when women just give up and we just don't care. We like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm tired. I don't care. And I felt like that's exactly what she, what she looked like. I don't feel like she felt nourished. I don't felt like she felt loved. I mean, maybe she does. I can't say that because I'm not seeing them. But I definitely feel for her to just come on camera and y'all know how social media is and for her to just be like whatever especially for him to just dress up and just have her on there knowing how people are knowing people are gonna say any say stuff I do kind of feel that's a little you know that that sends a little message right there because I think that this message I wasn't buying it but I think if they wanted people to buy it that this message would have spoke so much stronger like to me how are you gonna tell people how alive in Christ you are if you don't look like you alive in Christ if you look dead behind the eyes if you look like somebody if you don't even look like you care about yourself that don't look like a representation of Christ if I'm working at Google or Microsoft and I'm making all this money and I'm telling you I'm an engineer or I'm telling you I'm a doctor or I'm telling you I have all of this education and you looking at me and I'm looking like uh, who did it and what for you're gonna be like so Sophia, I don't believe you. And that's just kind of how it is. You talking about how, how God has saved your marriage and all this other stuff. You don't look it. I don't believe you. And that's fine. We don't have to. But I also think that how you present yourself to be on the outside says a lot. Just like when you step in a job interview, you're going to look like you want that job. She didn't look like she wanted anything but to bounce. I do think that she has a more, um, I do think that she has an outspoken personality. We did see that. But honestly, I'm going to see tell y'all exactly what I think happened in this situation. I think she did leave him. She did say that she went to go, you know, be with whoever, sleep on the couch, her family members or friends. And I think that she realized, hey, I need to have a backup plan or I need to make my own money or I don't have any money or ways to maintain. And that's why she went back. And that's why I'm going to say, ladies, like I said before, I don't care who you are with. If a man has money, you need to have your own. And I'm going to take a snippet from the last video I just posted. Point in all of this is women, you cannot be bought. Your time should be invaluable. And whenever a man acts up, your first reaction shouldn't be, okay, how much can he buy? How much can he buy? How, how much can he buy me? Your first reaction should be to walk away. And the reason why you walk away is because that shows that you are invaluable. I don't care how much money you have. Throwing a few dollars at me is not going to change the fact that you disrespected me. You need to demand respect. When a man feels like he could throw money at you, especially when he got money and it's not even difficult for him to earn, yeah, it looks great to you because it's a lot of money, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that just because he did it that he's truly apologetic he just knows what he has to do next time in order to buy your love and then the second component of that because so many people women fear walking away from men especially men of means because they feel like I can't do better or I can't have better than what he's offering me but see that's why you need to have your own now whether you have some career side hustle whether you are putting money away you know, saving or whether you negotiate this in some prenup when you get married, I highly suggest that you put some thought into that. And I say this knowing plenty of women who have been married to plenty of prominent men who have been stay at home wives. And then when they get a divorce, they are looking crazy because the man has everything and now and I stand by that 100%. And this is exactly why. Because when you don't have your own, you are put in a position where a man can use, abuse, manipulate, and treat you any kind of way, right? Simply because you don't have any means to leave for yourself and now you are at the mercy of him, basically. So that's why I think that you should never be at the mercy of anybody because then he has the control and then now you're on here trying to be on YouTube and fix his brand and trying to justify this nonsense and make us all buy into it when realistically we don't. And women, if if you are in a situation, if your man is hiding you red flag, you should be concerned. Also, no, don't continue to use your face to step back into something that's not right.
right? And also you, you should know to always have a plan B. No, people don't get into situations to get a divorce. They have been together for a very long time. I'm sure she don't want to get a divorce, but understand that if it comes to that and you cheat on me and God says, I have to, and I got to go, then I'm going to go and I'm going to have the money and I'm going to have the career, or I'm going to have the backup plan in order to do that. And I'm not going to be stuck in a situation where I have to be in this with you, even though it don't, you know, I have to, I mean, that's kind of the position that she's in. She's have to. So that's, that's why I want you ladies to always keep in mind, right? So I hope that this made a whole bunch of sense. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching because the video is getting kind of long and I'm about to go. So I will talk to you guys another day, another time. Bye y'all. Not ready for the show to end? It doesn't have to. You can head over to my site where you can read hundreds of articles. And also you can feel free to shop my store where I have all of my products for sale. And last but not least, for even more video content, feel free to visit my YouTube channel where I talk about a wide array of content. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time, stay blessed.